Hello and welcome. I'm John Garlick and I'm here with the Sheriff of Calhoun County, Matthew Wade, and this is Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Sheriff? It's always good to be on the show, John. And it's good to see you again. And you know, your folks this past week have done an awesome job. We Let's have been take busy. a look. Absolutely. Brings our count up to 4,963 people be arrested. 12 arrests. We can't even put them all on one page. So that's 12. So we can flip through there and see that we're almost to 5,000 people. And uh, we, once again, we can't do it without you. It takes uh, the whole community to make it a better place. And uh, thank you for helping us out so we can do our part to do just that. Keep everybody safe. And, you know, keeping everybody safe sometimes requires that people carry some weapons and all. And there's been a bill down there, there in Montgomery. Is. In Alabama, you know, guns are, are uh, if you don't have a gun, when you get to the Alabama line, we give you one. <laughs> so there's, there's guns everywhere. I'm a gun guy. I like uh, uh, firearms as well, and there's a bill that's been going through the state uh, legislature about uh, permitless carry, where you could uh, carry a firearm in your vehicle without a permit. Um, that's still going through. It went, it passed the House. It went to the Senate. The Senate made some changes. They sent it back to the House. Uh, if they concur with that, it looks like it will go to the governor for signing. So it's probably going to pass. But uh, people need to know that it hadn't passed yet. And even if it does pass. And the governor signs it. It's my understanding that it won't take effect until January of 2023. Our goal is to make sure that you're well informed about what the law is so nobody gets in trouble in the meantime. I've had some people call and ask, hey, what are these changes? And um, there's nothing that's changed yet. But if it does change, it'll still be January of 23 before it takes effect. Well, it's a, it's a big deal, and we'll have to talk more about that as we get down in the uh in the season, but for the most part, stay, stay with us. We have the first part of the lineup coming up and uh, we'll be right back with you here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Calhoun County's Most Wanted. First up in our lineup this week, Christopher Childress. Oh, Mr. Childress, last known to be living in Vilrica, Georgia. He's wanted for probation violation on escape third, obstruction of justice using a false ID and four jury second. This is Christopher Kiker. Mr. Kiker, last known to be living in Glencoe. He's wanted on a writ of arrest for possession of a controlled substance. Take a look at Stephen Jones, Mr. Jones, last known to be living in Aniston. He's wanted on a probation violation of possession of marijuana first. And this is Josiver Kauschert. Mr. Kauschert, last known to be living in Aniston. He's wanted for a probation violation on theft of property first. And we'd like you to meet Casey Kidd. Miss Kidd, last known to be living in Bowdoin, Georgia. She's wanted for failed to appear on possession of a forged instrument and theft of property for it. Take a look at Ramona Thompson. Miss, Miss Thompson, last known to be living in Boaz. She's wanted for failure to appear on attempted identity theft. This is Devious Wilson, Mr. Wilson, last known to be living in Oxford. He's wanted for failure to appear on fraudulent use of a credit card. And that's it for the first half of the lineup. Stay tuned for the second half later in the show. Welcome back. We hope you saw somebody in that half of the lineup that you might know of where they are or have some information about them. If you do, call the uh, Crime Stoppers number or call the Sheriff's Office directly, and uh, they'll seek them out and bring them someplace safe. Yeah, Absolutely. so we're here with a really cool guest, my old friend, Patty Tiller, Executive Director of the ARC of Calhoun County. Yes. Yes, Patty, it's good to have you on the show. Thank you. Not, not too old of a friend. Ah, <laughs> well, <laughs> we go back to when we were like six, maybe. Then. Yes. That, yeah, that's, okay. Yeah. It's a long, long time. I'll ago. agree with that. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so what's going on at the ARC these days? Well, we are starting a very busy march because March is Intellectual Disabilities Awareness Month. And so we have several opportunities that are kicking off this month. We're going around, we'll be meeting with a lot of the city governments and they'll be doing proclamations. We on Facebook are gonna be spotlighting folks uh, that come to uh, our programs this, this month. So you'll get to meet a lot of our faces. But we're going to be promoting the abilities of people with intellectual disabilities all month. So for our viewers that aren't familiar with what the ARC is or does, why don't you brief us a little bit? Okay, we are a nonprofit 501c3 
uh, agency, we serve people with intellectual disabilities from birth all through their lives through a variety of different programs. We are the local Special Olympics coordinator, and I think m people are very familiar with Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also have several programs like uh, Family Advocacy, which is casework where we support individuals with intellectual disabilities that are living in the community, maybe by themselves or with their families, and we help them make what I call uh, life-changing decisions or just help them get to the doctor or the dentist or the eye doctor or somewhere like that or um, a lot of times I've been called on trying to interpret a bill. I wish somebody would interpret <laughs> my bills <laughs> for me. Um, but one of the things that we've been doing this w uh, month, or I've been doing, and I just came from doing, was um, helping somebody with their phone, uh, transitioning from you know one phone to another, mm -hmm. which is not a fun process no, no. matter who you no. are. Yeah. But besides that, we also have a lot of educational programs that we offer. Uh, we on Wednesdays are, have a full house. We have a brand new building. We've taken the old Sorrell Dental Clinic over, which was next door to our office building. So we now have an office building at 401 Noble, still is our office. Next door is our activities center at 407 Noble Street. And on Wednesdays, we have a life skills class. We have a health and nutrition class. And then at 12.30, we have an art class for our adults. And, and, and also, um, in non-COVID times more than now, but we will get back to it, uh, also for our high school kids that are in self-contained classrooms, okay. uh, they will also come to, come to the morning classes and attend those as well. And we also have service projects that we do. We have... Uh, some other social activities that we do. We get our folks involved in giving back to the communities, working with other nonprofits, and also we have supper dances and all that kind of fun stuff. And we have the lip sync battle. Oh, the lip sync <laughs> battle. We haven't had one of those for a while. No, but we're hoping to have one in August. So, Oh, really? Yeah. John, keep your calendar. Uh, <laughs> I, have a, I have a prospective date in mind, which is April, uh, August 28th. But I haven't, uh, all the uh, dots and T's have not been crossed. So. Well, I, I'd <laughs> be happy to emcee that as I've done in the past. And, you know, I think the sheriff could be convinced to put a, send a team down there. Yes. Some of his talented young deputies uh, I know can lip sync to various things. We would love to have you or any group that would like to come and, you I know. I think we could raise big bucks to see if we could get Joey. Is it okay to lip sync a Millie Vanilli song? Oh, that's, I have been waiting for somebody to lip sync, to choose you can do that. Millie Vanilli. I would, I would think that was hilarious. And, you know, for folks that don't know what it is, uh, what we do is we have two um, opportunities for one group to compete by lip syncing to a song. And they get to choose the song. And so, and make up their routine, and they have five minutes on stage, and then we have another act, and they have five minutes uh, later on stage. So, I would love to see folks <laughs> do Millie Vanilli. I think that would be absolutely wonderful. It's, so. it's a great fundraiser, and it's great fun, and you really should. I <laughs> yeah. think Joey Stone would be a great we, There you go. Lip We'd welcome anybody to come in, but yes, I would love to see you. Uh, that would be wonderful. Well, Patty, we're going to take a break, and we come back, we'll talk more about what's going on at the ARC. But for now, you guys stay with us to look at the second half of the lineup and come back with us here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the second half of our lineup. First up this half, Anthony Howard. Mr. Howard, last known to be living in Oxford, he's wanted on a writ of arrest for theft of property second, unauthorized use of a vehicle, and use and possession of drug paraphernalia. And this is Joseph Silva, Mr. Silva, last known to be living in Jacksonville. He's wanted for probation violation on domestic violence first. And meet Tiffany Spanks. Ms. Spanks, last known to be living in Anniston. She's wanted for failure to appear on theft of property second. Have a look at Jonathan Pruitt. Mr. Pruitt, last known to be living in Jacksonville. He's wanted on a probation violation for possession of a controlled substance and burglary third. This is Marquetta Chapman. Miss Chapman, last known to be living in Talladega. She's wanted for probation violation on promoting prison contraband first and obstruction of justice. 
can meet Donna Horn. Ms. Horn, last known to be living in Aniston. She's wanted on a probation violation for trafficking in stolen identity. And that's it for our lineup this week. If you have any information on these folks, please give Crime Stoppers a call. That number, 1-833-251-7867. Welcome back. We hope you saw somebody in that half of the lineup you have some information about. And of course, you do. Call the sheriff. He'll, he'll uh, pick them up. We're here with Patty Tiller of the, the Ark of Calhoun County. Patty, you were telling us all the wonderful things the Ark does for our intellectual... Um, what's, what's A the person with intellectual, intellectual disabilities. disabilities. And you know, we have... Uh, sheriff, you'll, you'll appreciate this because in the academies, I, I do the training on mental health and special needs stuff for law enforcement. And we have a, almost a 40-minute video, eh, maybe 30-minute video, done by the Ark of New Jersey in collaboration with one of the local PDs up there. And it's very good. It's, it's a whole separate category from how we deal with mental illness and all. So we've got the intellectual disabilities and stuff there. And so the Ark of New Jersey is doing a really good job, Patty. You better catch <laughs> up. We would love to. <laughs> We actually would love to have the sheriff's department come down and do some of the training and stuff with our folks on, on our Wednesday classes. We would like to have community folks get involved. If you with bring us. them down on the art, I just would like some pictures taken of what the art they draw. Okay. So. <laughs> but, but with our life skills courses that we do on Wednesdays, um, part of what we would like to do is get people in and to teach them uh, just well, things to do life skill. Uh, we've had the uh, county extension service come in and do both nutrition classes and do some job readiness courses with them, uh, with bankers that come in and, and help with finances. I'm a strong believer in that, not not just for, for, for the ARC. I'm a strong believer of that for high schools. Right. You know, we need more of that in high schools, of how to function as an adult. I mean, some basic things, just, you know, how to keep your checkbook. I know they do some of that, but, you know, some of it is is, is uh, how to change a tire. Right. You know, some of this falls on parents, I get it, but, um, you know, just, just basic things of, of how to take care of yourself is, is something that I think is, um, could be touched on a little bit stronger, and those, they have great value for people that are uh, becoming young adults. So. Exactly, and uh, repetition is a very good thing. A hands-on is a very good thing. Sometimes book learning only goes so far, I at least with, with me. I'm, I'm, I'm very much a visual person. I like to see I like it. to do. I like somebody say, mm -hmm. this is how you do it. Show me, then I can do it. And then normally I'll mess up, and they say, no, do it this way. But after you do it, you're like, I can do this. Right, right. And we want to do that. So we encourage any any community group that would like to come in and, and get involved. Um, now that COVID restrictions are lessening, it will be an easier thing to do. But... Um, we always appreciate support from the community, and, and we do get it. We, we get help with our gardening program uh, that we run during the summer, well, early spring and through summer, um, that we have some of the local um, hardware stores that give us donations or uh, Downey's gives us seeds and things like that so nice. we can work. So it's, we always need the help of, of the community, uh, you know, in what we do because we are a nonprofit. And most of our um, programs are offered absolutely free of charge to the community. The only thing that we charge for are our summer day camps, and that's because we have to hire staff, extra staff, uh, sure. to pay for those. And the staff that we hire are special education teachers and aides and uh, a speech therapist and a, and a music therapist. So it's, there are professionals in their field that come in and help us for our, our uh, summer camps that we that we run to keep the attention and the skills up for our students during the summer. So people that might have moved to the community who have family members that have intellectual educational disabilities, how would they get in touch with you? They can give us a call at 256-236-2857. That's 256-236-2857. Our website is CalhounCleburneArc.org. That's a big, <laughs> very long. CalhounCleburneArc.org, and uh -huh. you've got a Facebook page. And we yes. have a Facebook page, which is basically the Arc of Calhoun and Cleburne Counties. And you have ever-expanding presence on no Noble Street. Yes. We're right there in the corner of 401 uh, Noble. The sign is actually in our parking lot, the 
you know, Fourth Street <laughs> sign. Can't miss us. We're right across from Salvation Army. Um, it's really easy to find us. But yeah, we're we're right there. We'd love to see folks drop by. How many people do you figure you guys serve? It really depends on the program. Um, Special Olympics track and field athletics, as it's really supposed to be called, is probably our biggest uh, Special Olympic event. But um, and for that, we have somewhere around the neighborhood of 175 athletes at one time. That's, but that doesn't mean that that's the only at Special Olympic athletes that we have. Um, we have at least double that with an active medical that can participate in our other Special Olympic events at any time. Um, we The events on Wednesdays are around, uh, we, we have a, a registration of 58 right now with that. And again, people come and go with that. So it really just depends on the program. Um, according to statistics, at one in seven people are supposed to be have a some sort of an intellectual disability to okay. some sort of degree. So a, a pretty big community for our for our area. Yes. So we we got to look forward to the lip sync in August. People right. who want to make donations can go to your website. People who are in need of your services can go there and make give a phone call. And uh, we really appreciate being on the show and letting us know what's going on. We'll have you back when there's more stuff going on. Well, thank you, and I appreciate your support very much. You're welcome. And folks, we have the. Uh, Crime Stoppers portion of the show, and then it's crazy criminal time, so stay with us here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the Crime Stoppers portion of our show, where we ask you to help us on the following cases. First up, between December 29th and March 1st, a Glock 9mm was stolen from a home on McGinnis Drive in Jacksonville. And on February 14th, someone stole a black 4x6 single axle trailer with dual ramps from Tredegar Road in Jacksonville. On the same day, a male and female were seen on a game camera, camera with the same trailer. And between February 1st and February 2nd, someone stole a 1999 blue Chevrolet Silverado and a Sears rototiller pull behind a lawn tractor attachment from a residence on Rocky Hollow Road in Jackson. And on January 30th, a black Ruger 380 pistol was stolen from a vehicle on Sunbelt Parkway in Gadsden. And that's it for the Crime Stoppers cases this week. If you have any information on these cases, please call Crime Stoppers. That number 1 231 7867. Stupid! You're so stupid! You know, it's getting crazier and crazier out there. Man, it is rough. I've never seen gas as high as it is now. People are getting desperate. Oh, man. Whew. Yeah, very desperate. So, you know, gas is closing in on over $4 a over gallon. Over $4 Maybe a gallon. A gallon. And, and seriously, it's, it's rough. If we can see this week's crazy criminal, um, that's Michael Baker up in Jenkins, Kentucky. Mikey. Mikey. Uh, gas is, uh, like I said, getting really out of, out of hand. And uh, so there's Mikey. Stealing uh, siphoning gas from a patrol car up in Kentucky. That'll get and, you uh, hurt. Well, it will, but you know, he, he thought it was funny, so his girlfriends uh, took a picture of him and they actually put it on Facebook. <laughs> and so, um, uh, you know, he thought it was cute. Uh, Jenkins, Kentucky police didn't. Um, sure. You know, so uh, he's going to jail for stealing gas. Uh, I think he probably would get a lot of sympathy from people right now, being as high as it is, but. Uh, if he'll steal from the police, uh, he'll probably steal from about anybody. So, That's for sure. Uh, but don't steal gas. It will get you in trouble. Um, don't, don't I, I know we have to take out mortgages on our home to get a tank of gas to come to work, but maybe we'll get some relief here soon. But uh, just, we'll, we're all in this together. Well, so. it's scary. I remember in the early 70s when we had gas shortages, my dad would carry a couple of five-gallon canisters on the top of the car, and we'd stop to eat dinner, and then he'd siphon gas from the canisters into the tank, and this one guy comes running out of the restaurant thinking that we're stealing gas from his station wagon. And uh, it got a little tense. Yeah, I could imagine, you know. <laughs> uh, I've never seen gas this high, and, um, you know, our world is uh, in turmoil, but uh, maybe we just all need to take a step back and uh, take a deep breath and figure out a way to make it work. So. Take a deep breath, relax. If you need help, call the sheriff's office. They're there to help in all kinds of emergencies, right? That's right. Probably not with gas. But Probably not with gas. We they can help you get some gas if you run out. But. Yeah, they take you to the gas station. That's right. Yeah, they're, they're there to help. And, uh, 
you know, the Sheriff's Office webpage is there, CalhounCountySheriff.org. That's right. 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 My Facebook page. So if you need us, you can contact us in a multitude of ways. Sheriff's always available for you. Just give him a call, go down to his office, make an appointment. He's happy to talk to everybody. And we're happy to have you watching our show. So stay tuned for us next week. Tune in and we hope to see you again, but not in the lineup here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted.